Oh, great. The intro is broken for this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to K7 Lockdown. I am your host for the evening, per usual, Space Fish. I'm accompanied by Heroism and Kamaka. Ladies and gentlemen, give them a round of applause. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. What's up, dude? All right, Hero.exe has crashed. So, uh, speaking of crashing, uh, it'll probably show off on the podcast, but the intro sequence broke. It wouldn't record the actual video until about four seconds in. It's absolutely awful. We've had so many technical difficulties today. Uh, we just completed the Monolithic Esports versus, I can't even remember the other team's name at this point. Valiant. Yeah, Valiant. Valiant. Yeah, we just finished that up after a huge amount of colossal crashes there. So yeah, XSplit's not working out the best for us today. Uh, <laughs> great news. This first part of the podcast is also included on YouTube so people can see what they're missing out on. Uh, like more more of me and more of heroism and Kamaka swinging in today. So yeah, let's kick things off. Kamaka, you know a ton about CDL. What's happened this weekend in CDL? Okay, so last week coming into this weekend, for those of you guys that missed out, basically Florida Mutineers, they won the last home series against phase and this one they're trying to do pretty much the same thing in their own part to do that they've beaten literally every team that's coming to their path and they and they're now going into what's tomorrow they're in the semifinals up against new york subliners and on the other side you've got dallas empire versus phase and yeah so the strong people of this tournament so far from the looks of things have been subliners and the Mutineers, especially, with some honorable mentions coming in from London. They had a few good things, especially from Luskin, obviously. Who, who wouldn't expect that? But also from... Hmm, shoot, what was the other team that I was going to give a shout-out to? Subliners, obviously, they have Mac and stuff like that. Boo. But yeah, they're also... Go ahead. What? Boo! Subliners suck! Don't at me! No, no. <laughs> Dude, I rate Mac. He's really good. Ugh. And honestly... Something that we can talk about later is sort of like a rise of the a the AMs is what is being called in the CDL scene. Is that people are starting to realize something that I've been pointing out for like at least a month now, and that's that the a, a lot of people in the AM scene could probably do better than a lot of the pros in the pro scene, and that they just haven't had enough attention to where they can get picked up. In my personal opinion, there are a lot of people in like the AM scene outside well the outside of cdl scene that can probably just fit right into one of these starting teams rosters and replace one of their players yeah i mean that's fair we've seen a lot of talent come through the k7 league on its own uh and we hope for a lot of best i know we have one team that was based out of here that went to uh what is it the it was like a cdl qualifiers i don't, I don't know what their cup is called. it was the, oh, the challengers, challengers. challengers cup yeah and they they did really like top, didn't they? Like some of the best. Oh, what's her name? Uh, dude, I don't remember. I think it was the uh, K Seven All Stars, <laughs> and I could be uh, they uh, they did all right. They did all right, but uh, they got beat by a few good teams. But like they were happy because they were able to pull up a map win out of the, one of the teams that eliminated them. So uh, I mean, to them, that it's not too much of a loss, but more of a, you know, hey, let's get our heads in the game for the next one. And uh, and that's where WO just all fell apart after that. <laughs> Look, WO was a crashing, burning festival as it was, just like BSA was from the get-go. There was too much politics. <laughs> there was too much, uh, like, terrible leadership. And I, I, I mean, cynical fault, my fault. Both of our teams crashed because we're both absolutely idiots and can't run teams. I'm here for comedy. He's here for... Uh, moving on. <laughs> so, Kamaka, uh, CDL, which, which team starting of the season compared to now, who was who was your tops? Honestly, at the beginning of the season, I thought that it was going to be a fight between Atlanta Phase, Huntsman, and Empire. But now looking at things, 
I think that Florida is definitely the team to beat. Them and FaZe are going to duke it out. Basically, FaZe have figured out a lot of good stuff early on in the season, and now things that people just now are starting to get together, like they got their teamwork down pat, they got their game knowledge down really good, their positioning. They pretty much figured out everything very, very quick. But now that everyone is starting to catch up to them, they're starting to struggle a little bit more. And we've been seeing that with a lot of close games with the Atlanta FaZe guys. And that's one of the reasons why they lost in the last home series up against freaking Florida Mutineers who have probably been one of the most improved teams over the course of the season. I'm going to be straight up honest. They can, they've gone from a middle of the pack team to a team that I think could probably take the entire cake. Oh, wow. So I already said who I thought were like the top three teams in the beginning. I thought that, uh, well, I should say the top four, top four teams. I would say in this order, Atlanta phase Huntsman, Dallas empire and Minnesota. But now I would have to say it's probably Florida Mutineers and then FaZe and then probably, st- uh, I don't know, man. I would probably say still Dallas Empire and then Huntsman, I would say, kind of falling off there a little bit too. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> right, here. And that looked good. This Are you- they got, I'm pretty sure they got D- DFR'd in, in case I'm mistaken. Are you like a uh, C6 fan? No, I am definitely not a C6 <laughs> fan by any means. Fun fact, I came from a Battlefield background, like where I got my start in casting in Battlefield, and he got his competitive start in uh, Battlefield. Fun fact. Oh, wow. so, so y'all are like we do the have same. Y'all are best friends. Like y'all, y'all hang out no, on the weekends. I don't, I don't really dig him too much, though. I, I like the cockiness in some aspect of it, but I don't know. The only person that I think is cool as a person to watch is probably Clayster. I think he's a pretty cool dude, but everyone else on that team, eh, I really don't know them or they, I don't know. They just seem like statues to me. Like they, they don't really have a lot of personality. Like they, they serve a purpose, but that's about it. That's fair. Uh, hero favorite team coming into the season for CDL. And now your current favorite team in CDL. Okay, favorite team coming into the season was definitely the Chicago Huntsman. Gross. Um, was it because uh, honestly, Scump? Yes, okay. I am a Scump fan. Yeah. Yes, to all the viewer discretion is advised. Uh, I am wagon. a Scump fan. <laughs> I am not a bit. Honestly, I really wanted to see Scump and the rest of the boys play at Optic, but, you know. No. <laughs> no. Uh, dude, could you imagine? That team would be a lot better if they had scum. Yeah, on. absolutely, oh, I'm ready bro. To shit talk they're they're optic, hurting bad, we'll dude. Oh, Why we just should talk? No, let's we'll shit talk optic right now, bro. Dude, bro optic is, is trash. Bad, this, this is my entire opinion. <laughs> Fuck optic. Yeah, I'm gonna say it right here. This is part of the YouTube. Thing. Fuck optic. All they are is a bunch of YouTuber fuckboys. If you've ever watched the Optic YouTube channel, it's nothing but them dicking around, being a bunch of losers, because they can't go out and practice. They're just doing stupid shit for YouTube. They're entertainers, which I can appreciate. They're not competitive players. That's why their first two series, dumpstered. Fucking trash cans, worse than my personality and jokes. They're awful. They're nothing. They should have really stepped up. They have, but oh my god, in the very beginning... I was so hyped, right? Because green, really awesome. I mean, everybody knows the green wall. Optic was like the best of the best. Everyone knew who Optic was. Guess what? They came in, got fucking dumpstered. Absolutely just the worst of the worst. They didn't deserve a, like, I don't think they got a single round win. They were just so bad. And it pissed me off. Because I was just yeah, they uh, they did it. They had like they, just, they got one map win in this uh, in this home series up against Subliners, so... and then they got three would by Toronto Ultra of all teams. Oh, what a surprise! And last, and this, Fuck yeah, off. At, least, at least I didn't say like my favorite team coming in was the LA. <laughs> oh god, I actually dude, how can you have a team with aches on it as your favorite team? Let's be honest. <laughs> well, so I got a lot of flack at the very beginning, and I still do for some reason. Uh, Because I've stayed consistent. When I first heard of the CDL, because I was starting to learn about the competitive series of Modern Warfare, which we'll talk about that story later. uh, I I looked at the teams. I looked at all their logos. I was like, okay, cool, the Green Wall. I got to subscribe to them on YouTube. 
FaZe? Oh, fuck yeah, I gotta follow them too. I'm looking through all the teams like, man, all these kind of look really boring. And like, I've never heard of any of these guys. And I saw the logo for the Florida Mutineers. I was like, all right, I can dig it. And I clicked on their YouTube channel, no videos. Uh, I watched their intro or whatever. And I was like, all right, I'm in. I I like these guys. Uh, I looked at their stats and everything. And these guys were pretty much nobodies. Like they had very little uh, records set, like tournaments won from all their guys in total combined. And going into the first series of CDL, they showed off all the stats. Like, Florida Mutineers are pretty much the the back of the pack. No one's ever heard of. They're not going to do anything. They're just here. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to still support them because I think their logo looks cool. And I like the idea of a a bottom of the board maybe making this come up. you to worry about the most. So. It's like the people that you don't know. Yeah. And then game one, I don't remember how they did, but it proved to me. I was like, all right. The, this is my team. And to this day, people constantly are like, oh, you're just bandwagon. And, and I knew in the back of my mind, I was like, it's because Pristini is a god. Like, that's the main reason the Mutineers won in the very beginning, because he's an absolute unit of a player. I disagree that Pristini is a god, to be he's honest so with you. good. What do you mean? When he disappeared for a little while, they started to slip. No, well, now that they got Awakening, they're doing a lot better than when he was there. Let's be honest. Bro, I love the Mutineers. I love Pristini. I still love them to this day. And that reverse sweep against the Huntsman proved to me exactly why they should have been my top team. And they still are. Oh, man. All right. Well, yeah. finishing my answer. Yeah. yeah. My favorite. Well, we had to talk shit about Optic. You chose this. You chose this life. Uh, Dude, that's going to be a really good clip. <laughs> My uh, favorite team now <laughs> is the New York Subliners. Uh, because I just wow, love I guess, the taxi Weird, yellow. Hero just disconnected from the podcast chat. That sucks. Uh... <laughs> oh, hold on. Let me connect back and oh, repeat it. Oh, yeah, okay. What, now, what was yeah. that, Hero? I, I heard your favorite team was the Florida Mutineers. I, did I hear that no, right? No, that's... It's uh north. It's opposite of that. Oh, the- oh. New York Subliners. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. New York. I mean, you want to know a fun fact? Uh, fun fact. Yes, I oh boy. Fun fact. Um, Subliners and OGLA are actually tied on the league table for CDL. Nice. Told you. See, that's why. Fuck you. Still. <laughs> tied for seventh place. Rip. Oh, thanks. Never mind. I don't like <laughs> That's what I was waiting. I was like, okay, if you say so. Not shit talking to anyone. I just I am. say fuck, that. Fuck everyone that's not the Mutineers. I'm never going to get never... picked up by any team in the CDL. I'm never going to get to Codcast for them because they, they heard me passionately not enjoy Optic. So here's my weird thing that I, I kind of appreciate about K7. We have one huge drastic difference from CDL. Our casters are very biased, or at least I am. And we are not scared to give our opinions. Like, we we want the people to know exactly who we are. And CDL is a little bit of, here's their personality, but they're not going to give their input. I'm not scared to give my input, and I don't think anybody else here in the K7 League is. We're ready to say, hey, you just got absolutely knocked out by, like, what happened tonight, Valiant versus Monolithic. Monolithic mollywopped Valiant. I'd say that's fair. Yeah, I would say that was fair too. <laughs> you're you're pretty rough. I, I went rough on them, which wasn't fair of me, but I think that's just because Monolithic's such like they did a whole lot better than I expected them to. No, they uh so you know, looking at uh Koki, I mean it was the best investment he made was uh uh, you know, retire the excess Reapers and you know, have some of their players stick out. They he moved them to the subs role from what I'm understanding, and they picked up a brand new team, like a brand new roster. Um, what's it called? And, uh, you know, he he just posted in the chat just now. He's like, you know, you know if they would have sticked out, they would have been, uh, you know, vibing with us, essentially. Yeah. But uh, he uh, he's doing good for his org, you know, sitting down with him, really kind of seeing how he manages the org and everything. Like, uh, I give props to him. I give props to him. Um but, you know, 
he, he's doing good. So we're gonna see that matchup tomorrow with the Knights Templar. I think I think this is a really good finals. Oh, uh, it's to be honest, be for week one. Oh, I I'm can... pretty sure map five. Me and Kamaka are gonna be exhausted. <laughs> yeah, it's you two casting tomorrow, isn't it? That's gonna be good. Uh, well, by the time you, this is uploaded, it'll kidding? already be it'll already be gone. Sad face. Yeah. Yeah, so it's gonna it's gonna be awesome, bro. I mean, at least we're gonna have sixty FPS on like your two hour, your two FPS per I, I hour. I fixed it. I did actually yeah. fix it. I learned how to adjust <laughs> it. I go in and I refresh the the Elgato. I learned that today after trying to fix everything else that went wrong. Wow, what a well, long night! What a long, long night! Yeah. <laughs> Def definitely a long night. Definitely a really great start to the week with my computer yes. frying the thermal paste. Oh my god! The stream, what? Okay, the stream so what happened? Great. What happened with your PC? <laughs> All I know is I kept getting spammed. Hey, are you home? Are you free? I'm like, no. Why? Well, uh, Heroes PC just literally took a shit on itself, and now we can't stream the game. <laughs> so everything was going well, you know, like when you're. <laughs> When you're on the XSplit broadcast, you get those alert messages yes. about like your performance. Yes. So everything was going well. We're streaming, we played the music, played the fucking intro because it was awesome. So good. And yeah, so I always just when I see that intro. But uh, he has a family. <laughs> so is the best part. <laughs> I don't remember who I saw. But that uh, either. that's the problem. I'm disappointed. <laughs> the best part of it we're all is a, a new stolen teaser. meme. We're, we're making a new teaser. I'm just trying to take the best moments of like all the casters just screaming and everything. Like tonight, there was a lot of good screams. You're you're gonna definitely see me clipping that crap. There's a lot of good ones for uh for the intros. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, I started streaming and you know we're like in the game lobby. And they're like, oh, we're ready. Everybody's ready. So as soon as I switch over to the game overlay, <laughs> in game overlay. Everything just starts going bad. I get the alert warning. Your CPU might be affecting your output on your FPS. We we detected frame drops. Uh, I'm like, oh, that's great. That's not a message you want to see. And then get into the game. Vic's trying to cast off my stream. When <laughs> he said he saw a tri he said he saw a triple going in reverse. Uh, <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> he, like the, so guy got a triple kill and he's like yeah i saw that shit in reverse bro because <laughs> your fps because your fps is like two frames per like hour. hour i was like oh that's great um uh, so yeah everything just fried we still played out map one you know the refs still did their stuff they still had to continue the game uh there was streams being streamed off their perspectives I had to go buy a can of air for electronic components, guys, because oh, there's wow. two types of can of air. There's regular canned mm. air. I learned this at Walmart, by the way. Okay. Gotta make sure you get that correct air. Yeah, you got to get the right one. Uh, canned air is for regular stuff, and then there's electronics duster. Is it like blow canned softer? Air. Or? It just, it's just <laughs> that. Imagine walking up to a so, bitch. Yo, you talking shit? <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. I'll pop you. I'll pop you. So yeah, I. So as soon as I I opened my computer because I built this PC in 2013, so that oh that explains yeah, everything. A, yeah. Um, it's an i5 core, which isn't like bad, but that's not yeah. bad. if I knew what that meant, I'd be really impressed. It's just like the processor. the processor in the the PC. I got an i7 now, and the new one that I got, so it's gonna oh, run that's way like a whole two smoother. numbers better. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it literally is a lot better. It, yeah, it's a ninth that. generation i7, so whatever that means. No, I know what it means, but uh, the processing speed is going to be way better. Um, what all that put you back for, though? Huh? What all that put you back? Like, how much everything cost you? Um, I was, I would say it costed me with tax a thousand one hundred. But hey, at least now you can stream. Until yeah. your well, Wi-Fi crashes stuff. on you because your internet's garbage. Well, I bought a 75-foot cable that runs from my living room to my room. 75 <laughs> foot. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as long... It wasn't the need for that. Wow. wow. Okay. Wild. But uh, but anyway, yeah, my PC just crashed. It still works. I'm on it right now as we're doing this cast. And, uh, you know, it just doesn't work for streaming. So... 
Uh, you know, it had retired the old boy. I'm going to give it to my father for Father's Day tomorrow. Oh, great. <laughs> hey, here's a piece of shit. Uh, I hope it works for you. It doesn't work for me. Happy Father's Day. I Thanks for not him. walking out on me. I already called him. I was like, hey, oh, dad, you want a PC? Happy Father's Day. So, yeah, anyway, I took this can of air and I blew that baby inside. Dude, there was so much dust. It felt. I, I thought somebody died and I put their dead skin in there. Don't ask me why. But, yeah, uh, that's some details yeah, that's... that we don't talk about in public. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, uh, uh, I, he would know I, what that uh, looks like. Sand. 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 Well, there was yes. sand in my computer. Yes. Yeah. You took your yeah, computer to the beach. Bodies. Uh, well, uh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, man. To be exact. But yeah, that's what happened. And then uh, everything went chaotic from there. But uh, Kamaka had his like wisdom teeth pulled out. That was fun. Yeah. How did that go? You couldn't do the Thursday? I- I've never had my teeth. Yeah, tell us. tell us. Well, I mean, like, I didn't think I was going to have to get them taken out either. But here I am without any wisdom teeth at 23 years old. Just got them taken out. And apparently it was easier for them to do. And it didn't do as much damage to me because, like, uh, they they grew in a lot better. So they didn't have to dig as deep for them, which is fun. Well, And... Yeah, so basically, I'm recovering very, very quickly with regards to everyone else. Normally, I wouldn't be able to even speak right now without, like, having any issues. But, like, not only am I, like, healing remarkably fast, but, like, I didn't have a whole lot to heal from. So, it's all going pretty good. I did. I don't remember a single thing from, like, this guy. He put the thing in my arm that gives you, like, the freaking drugs and That's stuff like that. That's called meth, sir. No, it's not meth. It's more like heroin. Oh, there actually. we go. It's like more- <laughs> Do you not inject meth? It's, it's pretty much. I don't know. It's pretty much morphine. It pretty much just knocked me out completely. I couldn't feel a thing. I didn't remember anything. He's just like, "All right, I want you to," and then I don't remember a thing. Great. <laughs> uh, so you you went to a full on like dentist for all that, I assume. Yeah, I got. They have an oral surgeon. He was only around for like those few days in that month. So I, I was like, "Fuck it, I have to go do it now." Dude, I've, you know, I could have saved you a whole lot of money. You could have flew down here to Tennessee. I could have just grabbed some oh, string, boy. put well, it around my trailer hitch, thinking. and just drove at forty <laughs> miles an hour. That come out real quick. <laughs> Promise. Well, I mean. But the thing is, wisdom teeth—they have like really, really deep roots. So you probably would. I got like, a really big truck. Oh, well, funny. But yeah, the thing is, like, um, the funny thing about my wisdom teeth is that if you had done that, it probably would have ripped a hole in my sinus cavity, and I would have been, and I would have had, like, not, I wouldn't have, like, any, every time I drank something, it would come out my nose, more or less. I mean, that's a unique superpower. I mean, you could have, you could have had a superpower. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sounds like a superpower. Yeah, I guess. superpower. I make water come out my nose, and it hurts. <laughs> Damn. Mm. Uh, mm. so wisdom teeth That's come good. out that sucks dude i i dread the day that happens because i'm sure it's gonna end up happening to me and i don't have fucking dude, dental insurance I, i'm literally surviving off of yogurt macaroni and cheese and since last night beer mmm creamy <laughs> there you go but like, yeah. yeah what beer what beer let's let's do some unpaid for branding you see, I have Blue Moon. That's like my favorite, Ooh. and the one that's most readily available to okay. me. And I also sometimes I drink these random double IPAs that I find just to see if I like okay. them. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I I do also really like Sapporo. That's a really good beer that I had when I was in Canada one time. It's like made in Japan and stuff like that. Why were you in Canada? That you wouldn't think about. <coughs> uh, a couple. Just like two years ago for like my friends, for my friend's 21st birthday. Oh, so it's just like a little Actually, trip. Be like, hey, let's go do this thing. It'd be fun. So I lived in New York at the time. Oh, okay. We lived so in New yeah, York. I went too far for you. And we went to Montreal. So it was only like, it was only like three hours right. away. That's not bad. That's like me going to Florida. Time. Yeah. So like at the time it was three hours away, but now I live in Georgia. Okay. So you're, you're down here in the South more. Georgia. Yeah, I am. Nice. But I am not at all a southern guy. Uh, the weather down here is absolutely psychotic. I know that's the generic thing to say, but the weather down here is probably the worst thing in existence. In the north, you get a lot of cold, and you'll freeze, and your road is messed up. But down here, you're going to get every season in probably about three hours' time. 
The one thing that I appreciate about it down here is that, you see, I used to live in like upstate New York for most of my life. And then I lived in central New York, which is right near the Great Lakes are. So we basically had from October until the end of May, we had winter. And then from then on, we had like one month of spring and one month mm-hmm. of fall and the rest was yeah. summer. <laughs> you never know what to expect. Oh, man. Well, uh, you know what we need to do? It's been 25 minutes, so I guess we'll go ahead and uh, say goodbye to all of our YouTube viewers. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, this has been K7 Lockdown. This is the very start of it, at least. Uh, some nice, fun, casual conversation. And now we're going to move over to our patron-only uh, section where you get to hear about uh, other things, like more personal stories, talking about the huge drama going on in K7 right now, which is ridiculous. We've had, what, two bands? I know at least two boots in the past week. Oh, have we? Yeah, no, it's... We're going to get to talk about that and some other stuff. So uh, click on over, become a patron. you get more of this as well as it comes out every single week. Uh, and you're also entered into a monthly raffle where we give away different items. Hero, what are we giving away this month? Giving away this month, Mr. Spacefish, we are giving oh, Miss Mr. Mm, Spacefish. Okay. This month we will be giving away the one and only Rogue Energy tub, 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 not packets, tub, plus the Commander Shaker. So, yeah, get on that Patreon, subscribe to that Patreon, get a raffle ticket, get your chance to win the Rogue Energy prize. It's a like I think it's. 45 to like $50. Good value. So like, pretty good, good value, value for spending good value what, 5 for like to $20 a month, depending on what you feel comfortable doing. Pretty Plus much. You get yeah. access to a podcast and uh, a lot more intimate details of the league, as well as you directly help us. And to finally top all of that off, uh, I do want to say a huge thanks to Rogue Energy. Uh, dude, Rogue is so good. I know I shill for it all the time or plug it all the time, depending on what word you want to use, but it's just so good. <laughs> Like I, I actually enjoy it a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 really fun, man. I mean, it's been a uh, a really fun ride so far for K Seven since January season one was really good. You know, a lot of development, a lot of teams, a lot of things, and then we started the Patreon, and then uh, everything is uh, going good for there. You know, for those of you that are patrons, you know, it's not just the podcast access, but you get the access to the inside of the league. Uh, certain chats uh, on the server where you can kind of see like what's going on elsewhere. And uh, it's just like an all exclusive pass for you. And obviously we're going to be implementing new things and more things as we, uh, you know, see what's some good technology to be used. So, you know, I would definitely uh, be a patron. I mean, it's not just the fact of being a patron but it's just more of like supporting a league that you believe in you know it it, it's really awesome to see like you know our patrons you know pledge and dedicate you know at least some of their finances to the league you know and that all goes to the league none of it goes to our personal pockets i mean we have an internal audit team for the league who just really has access to our financials chat where we record every single you know expense that we give out on the league so they know that we are sticking to our word plus the more the more paid content that is available just means the more free content so honestly in a really backward sense you helping us over on patreon helps everyone benefit because we're able to do more stuff for people to get interested in the league it's really going to help us grow well uh nonetheless Thank you all, and we will see you next time.